What's going on growers? It's James Piccioni coming to you live from Jersey. Because we want to grow food as naturally as possible, we want to be smart in the way we're building soil. We want to go out and take advantage of what some people view as waste and turn that into black gold. Just because it's in a garbage bag doesn't mean it's garbage. Let's go! In the past, I've made some videos about organic matter, but they were mostly about using wood chips. A number of you mentioned you just can't get wood chips, so today we're going to make a video about leaves, one of those resources that almost anybody can get locally. They're extremely abundant. And when it comes to me and looking at them, I think they're an incredible free resource, great free soil conditioner, great free soil fertilizer if you use it correctly in the garden. I also love these uh, so much more than using something like grass clippings because if you use grass clippings locally, you really can't trust that they're safe because number of companies and people they spray their uh, lawns with chemical fertilizers and stuff we want to avoid that at all costs that's why I love using these leaves because people really can't spray their trees for the most part so we know it's gonna be a lot safer than the grass clippings not to mention a uh, super convenient thing is my neighbors they go around they collect all their leaves they bag them for me and leave them on the side of the road so I can collect them and compost them so convenient or use them in my garden in other ways one of the amazing things about leaves is pound for pound leaves actually have more minerals than manure I know it sounds uh, a little bit crazy, but it's true. Another great thing about these leaves is that they're great for building humus when you're composting them. So what humus is gonna do when added to the soil is it's gonna build better soil structure, meaning you can retain and drain water better, which is super important. When it comes to the leaves though, there's multiple ways we can use them in the garden. I have two favorite ways that I like to use them. I'm gonna show you both ways today. We're gonna be making leaf mold and making leaf compost. First, we're gonna start with composting the leaves. And in order to do this, there's a few things you have to take into account. The first one is, in order to properly and successfully compost these leaves down, we're going to have to add a little bit of nitrogen. Because these leaves alone don't contain enough nitrogen within the leaves to, for the bacteria to excel to break it all down. So by adding a little bit of nitrogen, we'll really speed this whole process up. We'll add a little bit of water too, but I'll talk about it more as we progress along. First, I want to just basically explain the basics of composting. So when it comes to composting, what you really need is a good ratio between brown material, which is going to be your carbon, like the leaves, things like this, and your green material, which is going to be your nitrogen based ones. So it doesn't have to be green to be a green material, it just has to be high in nitrogen. Coffee grounds here used, great additive for nitrogen when you're doing a compost pile. Here is manure for my own chickens. This is one of the best uh, additives to your compost pile. It's just so high in minerals. So between the leaves and the manure, there'd be just the two would be a great thing. Again though, make sure you're always careful when using manures. You only wanna make sure you use them if it's a local source place, you know where the manure is from, you know it's safe. Then we also have some fresh greens here. I've got a couple locations on the property here where I just allow chickweed to grow wild. I continue to allow it to seed and grow wild so I can feed it to my chickens and it grows almost all year round. So we're gonna add this as some nitrogen as well. When it comes down to it, we're gonna go for a ratio of about five to one. Five carbon to one nitrogen. If you wanna speed up the process even more, then you could go four to one nitrogen and mix more often, say mix about once a week. There's also a hot composting process which is called the Berkeley method. This is when you do about 50% carbon, 50% nitrogen, and you could have finished compost in 18 days. We're in the winter now and we're not gonna be using this compost till spring. So we don't wanna to rush too much and we don't wanna put more work on ourselves than we have to. So we're gonna go for that common five to one carbon nitrogen ratio. And then we're gonna mix it only every couple of weeks because we don't need this compost pile to be finished until really April. That's when we're gonna be using it. So we're gonna let nature do a lot of the work rather than constantly coming out here and mixing it and putting all the labor on ourselves instead of let nature do the work, letting the bacteria go to work and do what it does best. Right here is a compost pile I put together about a month ago or so. And we're gonna open it and mix it. And I'm also gonna show you how you would go about if it was starting a brand new compost pile. You'll notice one thing here, when it comes to composting, you need a certain amount of mass. You need to be basically at least three feet wide and three feet high to start. This one was even higher, but it broke down a little bit and compressed. So I'm gonna take this apart and then move this same setup in the next location and then start building the compost pile there. Okay, we moved our fencing over to here. I've got it set up just halfway so I can uh, shovel these leaves and flip them onto the ground here. One thing you'll notice is these leaves aren't grinded up and you could grind them up. Most of the times people do, but that only really makes sense if you need the compost uh, broken down faster. If you need the compost done really quickly in a couple weeks, uh, cutting up those leaves, it's gonna initiate the process, almost like when you're chewing your food. You know, you're chewing it and you're pre-digesting it. That's kind of what cutting up will do. It'll let the bacteria get to it even quicker. But again, I don't, I don't need this for a few months. So I don't need to take the t all the time and effort manually to break all this stuff up. 
What I'm going to show you is how I'm going to build a compost pile if it was brand new. So if this was a brand new compost pile, the first thing I would do is add something on the ground that's a little kind of coarse to make it so it's not going to mat so we can get some worms and everything coming up and have a good airflow. So what I want to add is some asparagus. These are asparagus plants that I grew in the garden. And I tried to get as much as many leaves in there as I could, keep the stalks out. The reason I want this asparagus in here because it's a dynamic accumulator too. This thing puts roots 15 feet down into the ground. So by adding different kinds of plants that have different kinds of roots and pull different minerals, we're gonna be adding all this into the compost pile, ultimately building a better soil when it comes down to it. So we're gonna just add layer by layer things. As we add a layer, we're gonna to wanna to water it down. So let me grab the hose here and we'll water this first layer down. Okay, we're gonna water this all down here. Next, we're just gonna add some, some more leaves, uh, about six inches or so of leaves. Gonna throw those at the bottom. Trying to make sure we keep the shape. Some of the leaves in here are cut up already because that's how I got them, as you can see. And they're already starting to compost a little bit, which is excellent. So a few inches of leaves here. Making sure we keep that three by three. You'll notice the other day I went through and put some more green material in there, which is good. So after we have a nice layer of the brown, Let's get the water that all in. When we're watering this, we want it to make sure it's wet, uh, but not super soggy. And the water is so important for the bacteria to actually process and do a good job because these bacteria live on the film of the water. They're basically aquatic bacteria. So if it's not wet, you're not gonna get that decomposition process. We need to be feeding the bacteria because they're, they're the one that's gonna uh, expedite this whole process and allow it to go well. So I'm gonna add a green layer now after we have the brown. A little soil in there doesn't hurt. Next, another brown. And as we're getting to the center of the compost pile more, I'll bring you closer when we are. You'll see it's already started to break down. And this is a hot compost pile. If we wanted to speed up the process, we would add a little more nitrogen. The nitrogen carbon balance is what's gonna help. As we get to the center more of this pile, You'll notice some of the stuff's more finished, but also we have here, this is actual finished compost. And I put that in from my own compost pile. If you remember earlier in the year, we made a compost pile and adding finished compost pile or adding finished or almost finished compost to a new compost pile, it's gonna activate it and it's gonna bring those uh, bacteria in. It's almost like inoculating the whole thing with the bacteria so it'll get the process going quicker. Next, we're gonna be adding coffee grounds. I got a lot of coffee grounds so I can get them locally. So we love adding this to the garden, a great nitrogen layer. We do that and then water it in. And if you're smart, you don't want to use your hands. Uh, the best tool is a, is a pitchfork. You can see the compost is, uh, is looking much nicer in there. That's where it's cooking up. We like to see it's not hot because it cooled off, but it's still cooking up. I read that compost actually, when it comes to some toxins and things that, compounds that are, that are dangerous, what it can do is, through that process when it heats up and through the bacteria, what can happen is basically those compounds that are dangerous, it adds carbon to those compounds and basically makes them inert so they're no longer dangerous. So when you're doing the hot composting uh, method, you can actually get rid of some of the toxins and some of the dangerous stuff that are in your compost pile. Just make sure you don't add any manures with any antibiotics and stuff in those because I don't think that's gonna get broken down in the composting process. As you see, we've got some nice manure from the chickens in here. Everything in layers, and then watering in. Like you see, it's already getting some of that black gold in here. Looking nice. But we wanna take some stuff from the outside and move it onto where the inside would be. A few little pieces of plastic you're gonna get sometimes for free. Free leaves, but it's okay. Another layer of green, nitrogen. And then back to the brown. We're just gonna continue the same process that I'm doing. Just layering with a layer of nitrogen. And I'll show you guys what it looks like as we're, as we're finishing up. But I know I'm super dry here and I need to add some water. We wanna make sure we're adding some of these new leaves too. Not too thick that it matched the compost pile though. If 
We really want to make sure we're not matting the compost pile because it needs oxygen to breathe. These bacteria not only need water, but they need oxygen. Another layer of some green. We're just going to continue this process, green, brown, green, brown. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. It'll be large and in charge. I decided that as I was filling this up that I'd like to add some more of my basically finished compost over here into this one. Make one big compost pile. So I'm going to open this up. This is one we composted earlier in the year, but I've added some extra, you know, tomatoes and stuff that that I didn't get to before they were finished for the year. So this is going to be a nice addition to that compost pile that I'm working on. But you can see in here, this stuff's almost finished. You go back in the in the beginning of the of the fall when I started working on this, it was just all basically tomato plants and stuff. Now it's almost finished compost. Great smell to it. So we're going to make sure we're layering this in as well. Another thing I wanted to mention is when it comes to your compost pile, don't add anything with a lot of oils, anything with a lot of fats. I don't add any cooked food, don't add dairy. And if you add any meats like that, that could bring in some critters. So just think about that. Another thing is if your compost pile is not heating up, there's probably a few different things it could be. One, you might not have enough nitrogen, enough greens to mix with that brown material. Two, it may be too wet. Three, it may be too dry. And the other one, you might not have enough mass. Again, three feet by three feet is the minimum. As you can see, this thing definitely has the size. So if everything's like it should be, it'll be cooking up in just a few days. And then by the spring, we'll have beautiful, beautiful soil or beautiful compost to add to our soil. Let's move over to leaf mold now. This one is different than compost. And I think they both have their place. One thing, leaf mold is super, super easy to make. It happens just basically naturally. And another thing is a compost pile. This is super high in bacteria. So when it comes to your annuals and stuff, your green plants, they love soil with a high bacteria content. On the other hand, the leaf mold, that's gonna be super high in fungal activity. So your warty species, your trees, they love a fungal dominated soil. So that's why making leaf mold is a great addition to just making a regular compost pile. So one way to do it is, the simplest way to do it is you can take a bag of leaves like this is here. And the best way to do it would be to crumple all the leaves up. You want the leaves to be tiny and small, but you can do it with whole leaves like here. It's just gonna take longer. So you want to crumple the leaves up like we have here. Then just take a pitchfork and put a bunch of air holes in it because we need to make sure that there is enough oxygen and everything for the fungus to survive and the other microorganisms. So put a bunch of holes in, flip it to the other side. Bunch of holes in here. We don't want the water sitting and no oxygen getting in. Then the water will go anaerobic, which means without oxygen. We need aerobic with oxygen. So we've got the holes in there so it can breathe. It's already pretty wet in there. And this has some greens. You're probably gonna wanna get one with mostly, mostly leaves, but this will still work. Then we're gonna wet it down. We've got the holes in so it won't be too soaked. And then we would just tie it back up. And then leave this in a shady location because we don't want to get too much sunlight on it. We don't want it drying out. What's going to happen is the fungus is naturally going to come in here and start breaking it down. The same thing that happens in a forest when you're, when a tree, anywhere, any of the trees, the deciduous ones drop their leaves to the ground. They don't get mixed into the soil or anything. They lay on the ground as a mulch and create a perfect scenario for that fungal fungus to come in, creating the mycorrhizal association and just establishing it throughout the whole forest. Now, this is a simple way to do it. You could also just take some leaves, stack them on like a board or even some concrete and then put them in a dark spot. Same thing, wet it down a little bit. If you use whole leaves like I did in here, it could take like two years to create that leaf mold, maybe even three. If you dice them up really small, leave them in a dark space, it'll only take a year essentially for you to get that leaf mold. A little slow of a process, but a great thing to do if you're gonna plan it for the future. When it comes to successful gardening, planning is a huge part of it. Now, the third way that you can use leaves in your garden is if you use them as a mulch. This isn't something I necessarily suggest. One thing though, if you do use them as a mulch, it is dire important that you dice them up, that you cut them up very small, because if you have big leaves like this and using it as a mulch, 
These will mat the whole ground out, making oxygen not accessible to the roots, creating an anaerobic condition, and also water won't be able to get into there. So no water, no oxygen, no good plants. That's for dang sure. People sometimes like to till the diced up leaves into the soil, not something I suggest either. It's not gonna be detrimental to your soil, but again, in order to break down this carbon, we need some nitrogen. So we don't wanna tie any nitrogen up in the soil. The best way to do it, in my opinion, you can do a light dusting of, of diced up leaves on top as a small mulch, not too thick, but when it comes down to it, compost everything because bringing in that compost, the finished compost, whether it's vermicompost or hot compost like this, it's gonna be the healthiest for your garden in my opinion. Nothing beats it, nothing tops it. Work with nature, let it do the work, don't break it back. That's today's video growers, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you got something out of it. The compost pile came out fantastic. I got pretty dang dirty, but I had a lot of fun out here. And building a compost pile, something like this, I have to do it because at this time of the year when a lot of the stuff isn't growing, I only have my small hoop houses. I gotta be out here on the nice days. I gotta get my hands dirty. I gotta be investing in the garden somehow. So I encourage you to get out there, do the same thing. Take advantage of these nice days, get something done. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. Tuck and James will be back at you with another video real soon. We out.